All right, guys, we're going to be talking about pages 123 through 147. And this is basically the ending of Dick and Perry's trip to Mexico and the continuation of the backstory about Perry's life. Now, in the previous video, which was pages 100 and 123, I did talk about some of these details. The reason that these chapters are important, you guys, is because it shows two things in terms of the developing story. The first thing that it shows is poor, poor Perry with the terrible, terrible life that, you know, all these bad things happen to. And to understand who Perry is and why he's so damaged, and I don't mean physically because he is physically damaged. He was in a terrible car accident, but I mean the emotional and mental damage that he has. Um, I don't know the statistic off the top of my head, but there are a lot of statistics that show that um, a very big population in prisons is mentally ill. And... Um, I don't know that I would go so far to say that Perry is mentally ill, but he's a very damaged person and he's very concerned with what other people think of him. He's very invested in making other people like him because his family fell apart and he was rejected and, and bad things happened to him as a child. And I don't remember who it was, but somebody in my first bell class made the very excellent observation. It saved me from having to say it myself that Dick is to Perry what Perry's father was for him. So when we look at this relationship that has been largely destructive for Perry, the relationship with his father, where he was abandoned and had to work very hard for his father's affection and work very hard for his father, you know, to put the lodge together and to make a life. Um, I want you guys to see the parallels between Perry's relationship with his father and Perry's relationship with Dick because Perry is someone who will always seek the approval and the, um, the caretaking aspect of an older person, but he also is never taken care of in a loving way. And so when we see him seeking out someone like Dick, it's like, well, Dick's not a father figure. Dick has his own kids and isn't even raising them. But Dick is the kind of father figure that Perry had. And so he tends to gravitate towards someone like him because he was so damaged as a young person. So these pages are really, really helpful for Perry's background. The other thing that these pages do in the story is with Dick and Perry's money running out in Mexico and then having to return to the U.S., I think it's this trajectory or this path of failure for them where no matter what they try, things don't work out. The check passing scheme worked for a while and I think it's really because they don't have a solid plan they don't have a solid idea of what they want and they don't have a sensible way of going about it um, you know they always are going about illegal ways of getting things and that never is going to add up to the success that they're looking for um, and I think it's very it's very hard for Perry when they leave Mexico he's wanted to go to Mexico his entire life and spend time here and invest here and we see this really falling apart. This kind of harkens back to something that happened in the chapters and the pages before. Um, Perry had this idea of starting a skin diving company, which is where you don't need like all the scuba equipment and just like shallow water diving to look for, you know, whatever people may have fallen out of their pockets or I guess Spanish gold or whatever. And we found out that Perry won't swim because of his embarrassment over his scars from his accident. And it's just, you know, if you ever needed proof that the things that Perry wants to come together are never going to come together, that is proof for you. He lets his physical, mental, emotional limitations keep him from being able to fully engage with his life. And in some ways, I think that's what sent him down a criminal path is that brokenness of him, both physically and emotionally. And so, you know... At the beginning of these pages, Perry's guitar gets stolen. His guitar is very precious to him. It is musical singing and, and that kind of thing. It's an expression of some of his vulnerability and his emotionality and his sensitive side that's really important to him, and he no longer has that. And then he has to give up even more of his really important possessions. He has these boxes and boxes of stuff that he carries around even though he's a vagabond, even though he's a traveling person who needs to travel light. And he has to leave a lot of those things behind in Mexico as well. And what I would really pay attention to here 
are the sorts of things that he holds on to. Um, you know, a letter from his sister, um, the biography of his life that his father wrote for him to try to help him with his parole when he was in prison, an analysis of his sister's letter from Willie J. These are the types of things I think that make Perry feel connected to other humans and that make him feel human. They help him to understand who he is. But um, he also keeps things like, you know, his diploma from high school, which he received when he was in prison, um, you know, army medals, those kinds of things. What I find interesting about wanting to save the letter from his sister, especially, is that it's a very negative thing. He hates his sister. And reading her letter over and over again makes him hate her even more. It is not something that solves or fixes their relationship at all. But because it connects him to Willie J and the analysis that Willie J did of the letter, and because it connects him to his family, many of whom are dead, right? You know, we hear these tragic, tragic stories of Perry's sister who fell out of a window because she was drunk and of his brother who killed himself because his wife killed herself. Um, there's a lot of tragedy in their family. And even though Perry has a very difficult relationship with his father, his mother is dead, he and his sister Barbara don't really get along, there's still a feeling of connection that he needs. And um, so I had talked in the other video about how one of the big pieces of advice that Perry's sister gives him is to stop feeling bad about his childhood and to start taking responsibility for his own actions. And so the idea that I wanna bring up to you guys is there are these two psychological concepts of how we become who we are. And you may have heard of this concept before, it's called nature, like, you know, the outside and who we are genetically versus nurture, someone taking care of us in the way that they take care of us. And there is a big psychological discussion and almost an argument about what matters more. Is it our genetics that predispose us to certain diseases and certain traits and certain body types and whatever else that make us who we are? Um, or is it our nurture, the environment that we're in, the way that our parents treat us, the experiences that we have growing up that build us into who we are? They've done a lot of studies with twins who have very, very similar nature. They are not you know, exactly identical, even identical twins do have different DNA here and there but they are very, very close. And there have been studies even where they found twins that were adopted and they went to two separate families. And, you know, so they could study genetically, they're the same, but they had different upbringings and how did that affect them? And to be honest with you guys, they've never really been able to say which one is more important because different people have different theories and they do their research and other people do their research. But I want for you to think about this concept in your own life. And one of the ways that you can do that is to compare yourself to your parents or your siblings if you have them because you are genetically very similar to all of the people in your family and yet the nurture the way that you were raised is very different even among siblings in the same household my sister and i you know people will say oh you look alike or i can see this trait that you have a physical trait that's similar but we are nothing alike we're very different people even though we were raised in the same household and you know, some of that may have to do with how I'm the oldest and she's the baby. Some of it may have to do with the fact that, you know, I'm a little bit older than her. So like the internet wasn't as big when I was growing up and maybe the internet was a part of what made her who she was. Um, there are a lot of different things that we can look at. But what I want for you guys to see and think about not only, again, this concept of nature versus nurture in your own life, but think about it with Dick and Perry. We haven't been given almost any of the details of the nurture side, the raising, the childhood side of Dick. And so it leads us to see him as an evil per person by nature, by who he is as a person. He's just evil from birth. Whereas with Perry, we get all of this background about him, how, you know, how he was beaten by the nuns and abandoned by his family and never had any money and didn't get an education. And it starts to make us think, well, maybe Perry's not a bad person. It's not who he is. It's how he's been raised. It's how other people have treated him. And again, I want you to go into this with eyes open. When we see Truman Capote pushing us in that direction, 
keep in mind that that's his analysis. There might be a psychologist or another author or someone who looked at Perry and analyzed him and said, no, you know, this is his nature. Think about what I was talking about with his family, right? He had the alcoholic sister who fell out the window. He had a brother who killed himself. Is there something in their family blood or DNA or something about who they are at their core that makes these people fail and crumble and fall apart because they all had very different upbringing than him. They had a much better upbringing in some ways than he did. Their mother was a drunk, but they all finished school. And we hear some more details about this later. Um, what is it, nature or nurture, that made Perry who he is? And I want you to think what your answer is to that question. And I want you to think what Truman Capote would say to that question as well.